Hey, sports fans, it's Rod Peterson here, host of The Rod Peterson Show, inviting you to join us daily for two hours of Atlanta's funnest sports talk right here on WQEE. I say fun because it is. You've never heard a show like it because we make the listeners a part of the show. Every day between noon and 2 p.m. Eastern, you'll hear plenty of the best sports talk, including the latest of the Falcons, the Braves, and more. And who knows, you might even hear you. That's The Rod Peterson Show, daily at noon, right here on WQEE. Let's start with baseball. Dodgers star Shohei Otani says he never bet on baseball. Otani spoke for the first time Monday since allegations of illegal gambling and theft involving his former interpreter came out last week through an interpreter. Said he's very sad someone close to him would be accused of theft and illegal sports betting. He called his ex-interpreter a liar after he claimed Otani knew he was paying off his debts of more than four and a half million dollars. The NFL annual league meetings in Orlando, Falcons owner Arthur Blank told reporters they don't believe they tampered with the signing of quarterback Kirk Cousins, and the Jets plan to keep quarterback Zach Wilson. They can't swing a trade. NBA, the Celtics blew a 30-point lead, lose to the Hawks. Dante DiVincenzo scored a career-high 40, hit a franchise record, 11 threes, stuff the Knicks, crush the Pistons. Rockets knocked off the Blazers for their ninth straight. Good morning, everybody. At sports, Ron DeMoss, NBC News Radio. The views and opinions of this show and program are not the views and opinions of this. I'm getting your poll question up this morning, so hold on right, one right, second. Had to go get. Good morning to you. Yes, it's that time once again, ladies and gentlemen, to get it kicked off. That's right. That's right. It's time to go ahead and kick off all your favorite uh, radio show of all times. And if you're not into it, we got two words for you. It's Rhino Radio Penitentiary. I'm your host, the most Ryan O'Neill, and what's up, everybody? We appreciate you being a part of the Rhino Radio Penitentiary. I'm gonna you're getting another Chucky movie. Yes, we'll talk about Chucky. Coming up, we got movie reviews for you this morning. Fifty thousand plus of you worldwide on the shoutcast. Shout it out loud! Thank you, Chucky, for joining us. Uh, and getting ready to come into it is uh, 50,000 plus on the Shoutcast Shout Out Aloud across the Navajo Nation, Arizona, Mexico, and uh, New Mexico, and, the, and Arizona. We're across the British Columbia Islands of Canada, and finally across the Jordan Communication of Family Radio Stations, East Alabama, West Georgia, including 99.1 FM WQED Key, home of Southern Sports Inspirational Talk. And to my haters, listen up. I am the man around here, whether they like it or not. What's up, everybody? What is going on? Uh, we got another Chucky. Chucky, I think there's going to be another television series coming up for you. What's up, Maine? Maine, how you doing? I was mad they shot you in the toy story. <laughs> Maine, Maine, and Chucky are all with us this morning. The coolest cats ever. We appreciate them. All right, coming up in the next three hours, coming up in the final period, we're going to talk movie reviews. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. We'll talk about that. The new Godzilla King Kong movie coming out Friday. And Ghostbusters, ladies and gentlemen. All that's coming up with Shane B in the final period. He and I are going to do movie reviews, what's hot, what's not, and what's going on for you. Also, uh, in period number two, we're going to do some sports analyst, sports analyzing. As our sports analyst, Richard Holder, joins us. We're going to talk about... Oh, we're going to talk about the L.A. Dodger pitcher. I, I bet, but I didn't bet. I bet, but I didn't bet. He's almost like a politician. 
He'll say one thing and does another. We'll talk about, oh, yeah, that's coming up in period number two. Plus, this morning, Julie, Garden's home, Julie Garland's home is up for sale. Border Patrol violence, and we'll get ready for uh, Pete Diddy being arrested. Actually, yeah, I think he was arrested and his home was invaded by federal federal prosecutors and federal government. These stories and many, many more coming up this morning. Uh, we're talking about U.S. Customs boards into sports. Uh, Julie Gardens, uh, a migrant TikToker influencer calling for violence. Uh, Israel at war and everything. Yeah, we got to call for violence because you know why everybody wants to watch this imaginary conspiracy theory stuff. You know, that's why I put that one up there. All right, right now, ladies and gentlemen, there's many remakes I could have put into our poll question of the day, but I decided to put four that's just going to make, what, why'd you do that? For the heck of it. What is the best movie remake? King Kong. You got King Kong and Godzilla coming up on Friday again. Ocean Eleven. The original was done with Sammy Davis Jr., Dean Martin, and all that. Came back as a, as a sequel with George Clooney. The Mummy, the original Mummy movie, of course, and later on with Brandon Frazier. And Willy Wonka, of course, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, the original uh, Willy Wonka movie, all that good stuff with, with Gene Wilder, Wilder and everything. So what is the best King Kong, what is the best movie remake? King Kong, Ocean Eleven, The Mummy, or Willy Wonka? 100% of you so far have jumped on with us with King Kong. Kong. So there you go. And Chucky wants to, uh, Chucky's got a new movie coming out. That's what Chucky wants to have another movie come out. I know they got a new series coming out as he's getting old. Is he dying? How, how the heck is a doll old and dying? <laughs> a demon possessed doll. I might have to ask Shane B about that. He's going to be like, oh, uh, that's just not a. <laughs> Knowing Shane, he'll come up with, oh my God, I can't believe that. 58 degrees out there, 15 minutes past the hour. Time to temperature brought to you by Active Pest. Better spring fall. We don't care for those rotors, quitters, the gooey things at all. Michael the Green, the smack down for you. That's right. And we're also talking about CM Punk last night on Raw's Big last night from Chicago, where it's the hometown of CM Punk. It was a gr it was great promos, the rock attacking. The Cody Rhodes tag team turmoil for going for the number one tag team championship. WrestleMania is a couple weeks away. We will be doing a preview of WrestleMania on next Friday and getting previews. But uh, we'll talk more about what's going on. And CM Punk, he did not he did he did not disappoint. Straight edge independent skeptic right here for a straight edge wrestler. Uh, he did not disappoint. We'll talk about what say and how he kind of not only set the things up with to, towards Drew McIntyre and and Seth Rollins Drew's like is it PG brother I know uh Drew was trying to kind of help him out I don't know if Drew really dislikes him in real life or not if he just built they're building up a a, a, a a feud for the show but Seth don't like him and of course CM Punk called them all out. CM Punk's going to be a special guest referee in the world title match. No, no, no. He's going to be on commentary in the world title match. He wants to be the guest referee in the universal title match, which probably will come true. But anyway, he also threw off on Vince McMahon. Thank you. Thank you. The jabroni Vince McMahon. The jabroni Vince McMahon that's done all this Evil stuff. I'm a billionaire. I can rape over, oh, do whatever I want to, whoever wants. CM Punk got through off on it. Thank you, CM Punk. Thank you. Thank you. Because his name is not allowed to be said on WWE TV anymore because of the lawsuits. <laughs> Punk tried to do it. Thank you, Punk. Also, Cody Rhodes gave a little shout out to his brother, the uh, uh, leaked last night, too. Right. Good morning to you, Pete. He says, Good morning, Ryan, the Navajo Nation, and everybody else. Lightning has been. Uh, oh, it's been in the. It's, lightning has been seen in the area. Okay, <laughs> I haven't seen anything yet, but it's supposed to be rated here in a few. We'll go for your forecast in just a few moments. But yeah, man, um, 
before we get in, I'm going to go ahead and do the wrestling thing right quick before we dove, dive into any news or anything. Uh, I think that was pretty much it, what I said. Uh, Rock attacks Cody Rhodes and puts his blood on a Mama Rhodes belt. Cody Rhodes uh, uh, at, at the end of the night getting beat up in the rain. CM Punk kind of threw off on uh, when Drew McIntyre come out. Drew says, I am the chosen one. That's why you're jealous of me getting this title. He says, well, who called you the chosen one? Who was it? Who was it? Who was it? I was like, no, no, you going to it. And then Drew looked at him like, you know I can't say that name. And then uh, Seth Rollins comes out, and he does his thing. Channel 5 apps keep going off on my phone. Yeah, there's some lightning in different areas. It's supposed to be some storms coming through the metro Atlanta area. Um, also, ladies and gentlemen, you know, they, they, it was just kind of one of the best promotions, of uh, best promos going into leading it. Probably the best Raw ever. I mean, it was, it was enough that I could watch it all. You know, and then they had other great matches and everything like that. But, you know, check out our WQE key page for the rundown of all the matches and everything. All right. Time to take a look at that traffic out there. Be on the lookout for some lightning traffic brought to you by Killingsworth Realty in the Killingsworth Realty Road Report. Answer questions and provide resources so you can make the best decision for you and your family. Six seven eight five two five zero zero four seven. Decision three. Decision is ending. Discussion is ending. You don't have to do this. Sweet Leaf says good morning to you, Pete, as well as Sue, Tim, Bent, Bob, and Rodney K from the Navajo Nation for you. All right, uh, traffic into Cobb County road work going on the shoulder of I-20 near exit 71 delays. Use Covenant Highway there. That's up to about 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. In Fulton County, a gas leak has all lanes shut down near Campbell Road at Dotson Drive. Avoid this area. Take Cascade Road or Highway 166. That's closed down at 9.08 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. No traffic issues on Lower Fellville Road, our popular road, as well as we want to say over there on um, Bullsboro looking good this morning. In front of the station, Jack Street picking up a tad bit. No issues, though. Uh, heading down Greenville Street, uh, heading out Interstate 85 southbound into Grantville looking good this morning. Good morning to David, Dave Clark and the council over there as well. Going on down to the uh, Hogansville looking good. And good morning to our friends at Rogers Barbecue. Ooh, tasty barbecue there right off the interstate. Of course, they got a lot of great restaurants and right off the interstate of Hogansville. Head on down to LaGrange. Commerce Avenue looking good as well as New Franklin Road. No traffic issues in downtown LaGrange. Continue down on Interstate 85, getting off old uh, West Point Exit. You take the right there. Construction still going on, but you're still able to get through there. You take a left, you get to the Love's gas station. Of course, you can get gassed up there with great gas or gas yourself up with a Hardy's biscuit. Maybe a Hardy's uh, egg and cheese biscuit. Chicken biscuit or sausage biscuit, all good for you. Tasty, tasty. Hardee's in West Point, right off the exit next to Love. Continuing down Interstate 85 as we continue to cruise into exit 79 in Alabama. That is shut down. You have to take exit 77 in Alabama for the Lenten Valley exit to get off there. Continue to move on into uh, Casita. It's all looking good in Casita this morning. Uh, work uh, uh, the, the work, uh, just a little traffic as people are getting ready to go to work in the buildings there as known as factories continue to move on down to auburn opalaka no major issues let's look at your traffic this morning traffic issues you see something i don't see shoot us an email at 99 classic rock at gmail.com that's 99 classic rock at gmail.com what is the best movie remake that's my poll question this morning on the youtube page and we got people joining us uh king kong ocean 11 the mummy or willy wonka uh, so far, King Kong has took the top spot at 100 uh, percent so far. But this will probably change throughout the morning. We're going to have our movie review in the final period with Shane B. And we're going to talk about the brand new Godzilla King Kong movie as they come together to team up to take on a new, a brand new creature and enemy. We'll talk more about that. Plus, Ghostbusters. <laughs> It took the knob spot this past weekend like we knew it would. And we'll see if Ghostbusters Frozen Empire 
is the is taking over. We'll say 45.2 percent to 45.2 million in box office hits in North America alone. And Shane B may have seen that movie. We'll talk with him about that. Plus, it's also in the new Beetlejuice. I've seen, I seen the brand new Beetlejuice, 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 Beetlejuice. Yep, I heard about it. We can talk about it in a moment. Uh, Beetlejuice movie. We'll get into that in just a few moments. The Beetlejuice movie uh, trailer out. So we'll get into that. All right, that's that's our poll question this morning. Also, we'll talk about. Oh, Tony, old Tony, Tony, we're going to get in the second period. We're going to talk some baseball news. I gamble, but I didn't gamble on baseball. We'll talk about an L.A. Dodgers pitcher. And you ask about the bridge. We're about to hit that news story now. Headline news at 25 minutes past the hour. Currently 58 degrees. A large cargo ship struck a major transportation bridge that uh, spans uh, Baltimore's river early Tuesday morning, causing the structure to collapse. Videos of the infant incident published online by the Hartsburg County Volunteer Fire and EMS shows the large vessel striking the 1.6 million long four lane wide Francis Key Scott Bridge, a fire that went ignited following the, the structure falling apart as well. Wow. I heard about it this morning. Of course, uh, the extent of the collapse was not immediately clear, but on their fake X files, on the X files, it looks like the Hartford County MD fire and EMS shared that if you follow them and heard about it in the news this morning as well. Uh, the Coast Guard said it has received a report of the incident shortly before 1.30 a.m. The Maryland Transportation Authority confirmed the collision on X, urging the public to avoid I-695 Southeast Corridor. Corridor. Wow. The Baltimore Mayor, uh, Brandon Scott, said he was aware of the incident and was en route to the scene. The bridge first opened in May March 1977, ladies and gentlemen, and named after Francis Scott Key, who said to have written the lyrics to the Star Spangled Banner after being um, inspired by that particular river that's right there. This story is still developing. It is a bad thing. We'll keep the, we th thank God no one was injured. So far, we haven't heard any injuries. So that is a positive thing. Yes, it's sad that the bridge fell and everything. To me, I'm sad about any time structures or short structures or are damaged or anything but as long as humans life taking i am whew, good with that because people trying to get to work people trying to get their lives people trying to do things axel was talking about it in the mornings as i was going to work who's axel <laughs> i don't know who axel is axel rose <laughs> I'm sorry, Pete. Yeah, welcome to the jungle, baby. Do you know what's going on up in Baltimore, Maryland? There's this structure fire bridge was hit. Welcome to the jungle, baby. You're gonna. I'm, not, I'm just kidding. Uh, oh, I don't. I don't know who that is. Oh, sorry. No. Oh, 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 you're, you're, you're listening to the competition. Oh, I see how you're going to be. All right. I see how you're going to be. I don't even know who that is. So it doesn't matter who it is because if it's not Ryan O'Neill, they're not radio people. I'm just paying to be on the radio. <laughs> just kidding. I don't know who they are. I don't care. I thought you were talking about Axel Rose. Axel Rose actually could give a better news report and all them. Speaking of that, we want to thank our friends at Southern States Bank for joining us. Big account coming on with the company here. They know a radio station that has listeners. Got the call last week and got the information yesterday. Uh, should be able to get us on there, 99.1. If not, I have to go to the FCC on that. Somebody's burying us. Anyway, what was I saying? Southern States Bank is joining us right here starting next week. And uh, we want to thank our friends at Southern States Bank. 
Uh, remember FDIC starting up a uh, uh, an account is easy. Plus, guess what? Besides that account, you know what the two things they have in store for you? You can get your money saved there, the perfect account, and they have a savings account. It's called a savings account, not a vacation account, a savings account, which is what we all were taught back in college and high school. <laughs> oh, that should be able to pick us up easy, though. That That's a good one. That's a good radio. It still actually works. <laughs> These newer radios are like... You got an old one, put it on, it goes right in there. <laughs> you got a 1980 radio, 1989 Delco radio. That's better than any kind of radio out today. All these fancy ones. Mike checks us out. Transforms into a transform. <laughs> You're like, I just want to turn the radio off. Transform. You want me to turn into a bird? No, I'm trying to turn the radio on. I'm transforming into radio extravagant. <laughs> so, brother, don't put, you, put it down. At least your radio is a real radio. <laughs> anyway, Sweet Lee's like, yeah, it's a real radio, brother. Not these ones today. Sue says, I, I don't know what you're talking about, but I ain't believe you, right? <laughs> don't, don't believe me. I'm joking. I want people thinking I'm there. But anyway, Southern States Bank, we thank them for being a part of the Rhino Radio Penitentiary and being a sponsor of WQEE. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we got more news you can use uh, that you can get on top of it. We're going to get into Sean Combs, better known as P. Daddy. P. Diddy. P. Daddy's in trouble. That's right. He didn't, he didn't got in trouble. All this sex trafficking people on all sides getting in trouble. Don't matter what, whether you're Republican, Democrat, politician, non-politician, actor, singer. The Lord's bringing them all down, baby. I told you all this years ago. We talk, I called them all out. But no, nobody wants to listen to me. You don't have enough uh, conspiracy nut. In you, Ryan, conspiracy nut, you got to take the Bible, read it for what it is, and then transform it into some lie that runs kids off from wanting to go to church. <laughs> yeah, you do know that's not, not the church's fault. These people don't want to come to church. It's the people who want to lie. <laughs> All right, back in a moment. I'm picking with you there, Pete. Oh, guys, do thank Southern States Bank for coming on. I do. I needed them. I'm just glad there wasn't nobody injured in this altercation and even the guy on the cargo ship. Because that, that, that concerned me. Oh, man, look at all this good stuff I wanted. I didn't get put on the page. It's for sale. My 86 SUV is for sale. Okay. I mean, 89, sorry, 89, not 86, sorry. Oh, man, we got some good news over here that I need to get to. I got to get all, almost all this done between now and the next hour when my sports guy calls. Yep, 89. I was mislooking at it. It's Tuesday. I'm back at normal. So, so far, the what is the best movie remake is King Kong. 
All right, let me get some. Let me get this news out of the way and top news out of the way. Yep, yep. Got to get some border news in for you. For more information, contact Holly. Pete, I should get you to come in the station and do a, a trading post show on the station. <laughs> do it on Saturday mornings. Everybody loves the trading post. But everybody loves it around here. Buy, sell, all the, all the wonderful people. All the good people like to get on that, find deals. I missed that show too. We used to have one on every station. I, every smaller station I worked on, we had one. Every bigger station, we didn't. But I love to put one on here. I just I don't have time to do everything. <laughs> also, I'm gonna put a shopping show on here. So. back into it welcome back into this edition of rhino radio penitentiary we got a lot of stuff to talk about between now and 30 minutes past the hour next hour as our friend richard holders will join us we're going to talk baseball news we're going to talk about the biggest baseball news gambling baseball news people talking about what pete rose had responded to it yes uh one of the biggest stars in today's uh major leagues Big pay out there in Los Angeles, ladies and gentlemen, is accused. Thank you. I appreciate that, Pete. Oh, I appreciate that. Doesn't matter. It's the trading post. The coolest thing ever. People love that. <laughs> but uh, the biggest th thing going on in baseball is gambling not not opening day to uh, coming up on Thursday as the Braves take on the Phillies and we'll probably have the game for you on Braves Country Radio. Uh, it's taking over at three o'clock in the afternoons every day, but 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 there's a big but. I cannot lie. <laughs> but that's not the big story. We'll talk about it coming up next hour. So. Let's get in some headlines at 37 minutes past the hour, currently 58 degrees. Let's take a look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Israel at war update day 172 on this Tuesday. See there? My own TV station. Do I see that? Everybody does. That's why we all, that's why, that's why y'all bring in, that's why I do what I do. I want to bring in great people. You know what I mean? Israel war update day 172, 480 of the 800 uh, suspects at a hospital in Gaza, according to the IDF, are Hamas or Jihad members, soldier killed in uh, Gaza fighting, and of course the death toll raises to 252. CIA Chief Bill Burns departs uh, the Gaza Strip at, at the... Uh, Hiding talks on a truce deal, and U.S. Secretary General calls for immediate ceasefire at the Egyptian-Israel border. So we'll keep you ready as that moves forward as well. Wow. Speaking of border news, right quick, what's up? Radio, podcast. You got a podcast? Might want to hear it, bro. <laughs> I always have to help out the, the newer up-and-coming podcasters because they like to listen to the radio guy. The uh, the ones that are already out there, I think I know what I'm doing. The younger ones be like, hey, you know, I'd like to learn more. <laughs> like you're a genius if you want to learn more. Uh, e I don't know what I'm going to say. If you, hey, I'd like to see it. You can send your podcast and let me hear it at 99 classrock at gmail.com. I'd be happy to, to help you out. What? You're going to help somebody out there, right? Yeah. Do me. That's what we do. 
egomaniacs in this business. It's like politicians and stuff. All right, part of news. The number of arrests of illegals crossing into U.S. with Mexican has nudged upward since February. 140,644 arrests have been made as those attempted to come across. 30,000 people have been allowed to cross from Cuba, uh, Nicaragua, Haiti, and even more. Wow, wow. And i tell you what, we'll talk about a influence here in just a few moments. Still to come, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is doing something for users under 14, which is not a bad idea. I don't like I don't like his uh, ban on books or his ban on black history because black history is history. <laughs> Durr. Without black history, we wouldn't have traffic lights. Durr. We wouldn't have peanut butter. Durr. <laughs> and a lot of other things. But uh, I do like this that he's doing. So there's one thing you get. Let's get, we'll get in that in a moment, in a moment, 20 minutes away from the top of the hour. A migrant TikTok influencer is urging his followers to invade the United States homes. He says he's coaching them to go ahead and take advantage of the laws that protect squatters. Uh Uh-uh, they throw me out on my butt. Right now, I follow three different podcasts when Holly starts hers as before. Holly is is going to be a podcaster slash radio star and soon to be TV star. <laughs> That's what we all do here. So she is going to be the number one podcast. You better be following Pete. Or she'll get you. <laughs> anyway, let's get back to this guy. He's like, if, if I was squatting, they throw me out. They'd arrest me. I've seen them arrest people. And how could his, this guy? Uh, the influencers known as Lionel Mon, Monrino, Monrino, who moved from last year into September into Columbus, Ohio. And now he and his partner and their daughter live there. And he said, they, when he first, he said, he's living off the government, getting all this money because of his daughter. And he says, look, there's laws that say that squatters rights. So you just go ahead and take over a place and uh, no one's going to be able to kick you out for a long period of time. In a recent video, he was talking about rock, squatting is gaining uh, a lot of attention. He asked others to help pay for the fine of the 15 year old migrant accused of shooting the tourist in New York City that we talked about a, a few months back. He said, today it could be him. Tomorrow it could be you. It's a lot of misinformation that's going online. And this right here, I'll be honest with you, is going to make some people a little angry. And then you're going to get those people a little angry. They're going to go out and do something that they normally wouldn't do to somebody. Like, why are you trying to, no, I'm not trying to take up for anybody. I'm just saying, I'm trying to keep those people from getting angry. But I have to tell like it is, this guy's being an idiot. He's lying. First of all, yes, yeah, squatter rights are only for certain situations. People that are paying paid rent and then paid rent for months in a place, and then they got to give you a certain amount of time to get out. That's one thing. Or if, you, if you're going from one location to another, like a department complex was supposed to give you two months, if they're going to go up on your rent without you knowing or double your rent or triple your rent, there are certain rights as renters. But just living in somebody's house when they're out here trying to rent it, just just popping in there and staying in there, no, you can't do that. Maybe in some states, maybe in Ohio, that is, and he's talking about that. But it's I don't I don't I don't see it as a situation that's real. You cannot do it. I've seen too many people get arrested and and taken out of homes because the person owns the place has rights. They may not have a right to shoot you in their home. They have a right to call the police and have you drugged out. <laughs> drug that son, of, drug that son of a gun out of here. So you know, I mean, especially, I mean, I know if it's a dilapidated place and they're trying to build it, there's certain laws, but they still can get you out of there. You know, come on. If if you had rights, squatters' rights, just to go into somebody's house that's empty and stay there 
and nobody could throw you out, then why the heck did, was that young man, Mr. Aubrey, killed a few years ago? And he didn't do anything but walk through a construction site. Okay. I mean, come on by a bunch of idiots who thought they could kill him. So come on, guys. It's not what you think it is. It is misinformation, and he is lying to people and everything. So he's – and I can't see how somebody like that can have millions and millions of followers and podcasters and, and everything, that which is going to be soon to be the past because, you know, the radio is about to take over all that, and so is FCC. I've been telling you this for seven years. You're seeing a lot of stuff on social media happening. I'm about to tell you about this social media stuff with Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. I'm telling you, it ain't the government – the government's doing what is right, not what is wrong. We've gone way too far. And yeah, sometimes like CM Punk dropping some cuss words like he did on Raw last night and Drew McIntyre saying, hey, this is uh, what you call uh, PG, brother. 100% PG is not what I'm saying. I mean, you can say damn, you can say hell. But dropping F-bombs and S-bombs and all that kind of stuff makes you un sound uneducated. And, and stuff that's on social media is dangerous to our kids. I've not seen the commercials that's dangerous to our kids. Uh, this is the one thing I can agree with Ron DeSantis on. I disagree with Ron DeSantis on him trying to ban black history. And then some people, let's go critical race theory today. I'm not going to get into that imaginary conspiracy theory. These are conspiracy theories that the left side and the right side is trying to get you to hate one another. Reality Black history needs to be put in, period. Ribbon cutting. Yes, I will be there on Friday. And I think uh, the Black Chamber of Commerce will be too. I'm going to get to meet some of those wonderful folks. I've been asked to show up. So I will be there Friday. Um, but uh, I do agree with him on this situation because it is dangerous for kids under certain ages. There's a lot of kids that are in the next generation, generation, below generation. You got generation, you got millennial generation, generation on Z, I guess that's what you call them. But the next generation coming up and every, well, you need to tell your boss, you got to come on out, Pete. We got to hang out. You say Ryan requires you to be there. He can come hang out too. Tell your boss to come hang out too. We like, I like to meet him. <laughs> Tell him that Ryan gives people days off with pay. <laughs> anyway, we're about 15 minutes away from the top of the hour. 58 degrees on the cloudy skies. Rain's supposed to be heading into the area pretty soon. But let's get back to this. I do like this because a lot of young kids, like I said, a lot of young kids that are below the Generation Z or whatever they're called, uh, the next generation kids from 2 to 12 years old, 14 years old, most of them are spending their time outside, okay? And I love it. If you'd rather get on your bicycle and, and your, kid, your grandkids and kids would rather ride around on their bicycle than play on computers all day, thank God for that. Those kids are heroes. They are bringing back what we did, but that don't mean that they, they're just, it's just the computers and internet is just, they were born into it. It's like, okay, whatever. <laughs> two year old can get on the computer. This is boring, mama. <laughs> I'm two years old. This is boring. <laughs> but anyway, Florida governor Ron DeSantis on Monday did sign a bill banning those under the age of 14 from signing up for social media accounts. Wow, I'm glad to hear this. DeSantis signed the House Bill 3 at the Cornerstone Classic Academy at Jacksonville Charter School. In the statement, he said that uh, Bill gives parents a greater ability to protect their children and is what is, it is in what is one of the most restrictive measures in a few states to monitor social media use of minors. I don't disagree with this, okay? I don't disagree. I've seen stuff on the internet that, at my age, makes me go, what in the blue blazes is that? Now, you know why I'm saying blue blazes? Because I'm on the radio and everything. So. Social media harms children in a variety of ways. This is the first time I agreed with DeSantis on something. Uh, 
Well, there's a few things I've agreed. I, you know, I'm, I'm a down the middle guy. I have to be on both sides. But, you know, like I said, I disagree with him. I want to take away from black history in the schools, but I agree with this. Who had vetoed an earlier version of the bill weeks ago targeting social media users ages 16 and under. The bill will go in effect to January 1st, 2025. In addition, in addition to the extra age ver verification, the bill specifically protects the ability of those in Florida to remain anonymous online, prov provides a minor who is younger than 14 years of age to become, prevents a minor who's 14 years of age and younger uh, becoming a social media account holder and empowers parents to decide whether or not 14 and 15 year olds can sign up as well. I know, I know. Freedom, freedom, freedom. There's no, that's not freedom. Okay. Freedom, uh, it's just like when I tell you these racist Nazi Billy people that don't need to be on the internet spreading propaganda. It's not freedom. I know there's going to be a lot of freedom people. Well, I want to know that the freedom people that say it's all right for the Nazis to have freedom of speech, are they for this? They should be against this. See, I'm against anybody that lies, says sexual overtones on the internet racist on the internet, uh, abusive on the internet. It's not freedom of speech. And I'm also for this. I'm also think this is a good idea. It, it may piss some people off, but I don't care. Good morning, you're on. Good morning. Uh-oh, the phone, ring again, ring again. Uh-oh, uh, -oh, uh. All right, we'll take a break back in a moment. You're listening to Rhino Radio Penitentiary. But anyway, one more night. Yeah, I think it's a good idea for them to do this. It's raining, of course. Uh, that's, that's one thing that's messing me up. No, I'm just kidding. All right, let's jump right back into it. We'll come back. We got more news going into the next hour, and we'll talk about Julie Garland, Garland's the Dorothy from Wizard of Oz is home being up for sale and much more. But I think this is a great, fantastic idea right here. I agree with him on this situation. And no, freedom of speech is not being taken away on either side. We don't need hate speech on the Internet. We don't need disrespect on the Internet. We don't need I want to worship somebody on the Internet. And I'm talking about humans, not God, humans. And we need to watch out for our kids because there's a lot of derogatory stuff on there. So. I think that signing this bill in the law is not restricting anything because social media is like media. I know a lot of you don't understand this, but it's like media. We have certain rules we have to abide by. You can't just drop F-bombs and S-bombs and think you're cool. Most of the time, that makes you look uneducated. Back in a moment. And especially following conspiracy theories make you look uneducated. <laughs> Hey, Jasper! Hey, Jasper! How you doing, Jasper? Spring break this week! Spring break this week! <laughs> Who are you whispering to? Who am I whispering to? What do you mean? Nobody's whispering to anybody. <laughs> I said, hello, Wat Jasper. Bethlehem quickly agreed. Wishbone Fried Chicken is back in a brand new location. 
31 Jackson Street, Sweet A here in Get rid of that. The same great taste. The best chicken around. Fish dinners. Get rid of that. Monday through Saturday. Andrew Polanis, my lovely bride, is on. <laughs> Why do you say I didn't want to drink coffee? I'm trying to wake up, Jasper. <laughs> I'm old enough to drink coffee, Jasper. Welcome back in to Real Radio Penitentiary. Good morning to you, Jasper. You got spring break this week, Jasper approved. Yeah, I'm talking to you on the radio. What is the best movie remake, ladies and gentlemen? That's my cold poll question this morning. Uh, King Kong, Ocean Eleven, The Mummy, or Willy Wonka? 86% of you so far say King Kong, 14% say Ocean Eleven, that's the remake with George Clooney, uh, originally with Dean Martin in it. The Mummy and Willy Wonka both at 0%. We're going to talk about movies coming up in the final period this morning because Shane B. joins us. He and I are going to talk top 10 movies, what hot, what's not. The new Beetlejuice movie, I saw the trailer for that. We'll talk about King Kong and Godzilla this Friday in theaters as both of them are coming together to take out a common enemy. Hmm, that's coming up. Plus, Ghostbusters uh, Frozen Empire took the number one spot over the weekend. Then what you going to do? Ghostbusters! Something strange in the neighborhood, yeah. Still to come in the next hour before we talk about Major League Baseball and the gambling uh, controversy around one player, with our sports analyst, Richard Holdridge, and talk about River Dragons and much more. We're going to get to it. We're going to talk a few other things for you this morning. Uh, Julie Garland's uh, Bel Air home is up for sale. We'll talk, tell you stories on that. And we'll get you some U.S. Custom and Borders season out some uh, very Kansas City Chiefs and Kansas City championship rings. They were fake, though. We'll get into all that. In the headline news next hour in a South, South Carolina court clerk accused of tampering with Alex Murdoch's jury. You remember him, Alex Murdoch, the lawyer who was accused of killing his wife and son. They made even a lifetime movie about him. Jury resigns post. We'll tell you why Becky Hill did that. It's all coming up next period. All right, we're going to take a break. Stay tuned. More on the way is the Rhino Radio Penitentiary. Cruises on. What's up, Jasper? Monday, since allegations of illegal gambling and theft involving his former interpreter came out last week through an interpreter, said he's very sad someone close to him would be accused of theft and illegal sports betting. He called his ex-interpreter a liar after he claimed Otani knew he was paying off his debts of more than four and a half million dollars. You are a liar. He held annual league meetings in Orlando. Pieces I need more coffee. Blake told reporters they don't believe they tampered with the signing of quarterback Kirk Cousins and the Jets plan to keep quarterback Zach Wilson. They can't swing a trade. NBA, the Celtics blew a... Period. You don't need to be drinking beer that early. <laughs> Dante DiVincenzo scored a career high 40 in a franchise record 
Brees got the next first. Mackman. I hope. Oh, yeah. Well, let's do something fun, Pittsburgh. but why? Uh, sports, <laughs> NBC News Radio. WQE 99.1 FM, the key. Sharksburg, Franklin, LaGray. NBC News Well, it's Radio. probably, it's probably, Mackman, it's probably a decent time where you're at drinking. <laughs> oh, Pete says laugh out loud root beer. Okay, okay. Well, this is all cold coffee, so that's all I ever get. A little bit of, little bit of this and a little bit of that. Oh, you're in Alabama. It's 7 a.m. there. Okay. Well, it's Alabama, man. You know, didn't uh, – I'm in Noonan where Alan Jackson's from, and he wrote that song with Jimmy Buffett. It's 5 o'clock somewhere, right? <laughs> now, I don't drink at all, so straight edge independent skeptic, but you do what you want. Again, next month, more from Mark Mayfield. A judge rejected a further delay in the case and said jury selection to begin on April 15th. It is five o'clock somewhere, so I got too much blood in my alcohol stream, bro. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. That's fine. I got too much blood in my alcohol stream. <laughs> I appreciate you being with us. Uh, Appreciate you being with us from Alabama. What part of Alabama, my friend? If I can ask, you don't have to tell me. I mean, it's no big deal. Because we're in Georgia. And. Oh, man, Huntsville. That's cool. They still got the space. Do they got a space museum or something there? I can't remember. It's been years since I've been around Huntsville. So. The Re Space and Rocket Center. Oh, cool, cool. Well, if you head to you head towards Florence, and then you can get on the Tennessee River. That's where some good fishing is. For I know a lot of people fish there. Right? Yep. It's uh what? Well, I mean, I don't know if anybody died in that 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 happened this morning. Uh, unless they've updated it since I thought about. It. I know that the the Baltimore bridge collapsed happening after a cargo ship. I have to check out and see if how many people were killed. Um. We'll jump into that. I'll have some stuff on that. Small plane crash in Opelika on Sunday. What? Well, we know there's a little small airport near that area. So, two people were confirmed dead. Wow. Let me, let me find. I was just saying earlier this morning, as long as nobody died in that situation, I, I mean, I'm not all right with historic structures being damaged, but I'm all right with them being damaged if someone is not dead. But. Say dozen, including twenty construction workers five hours ago. Sports fans, it's Rod Peterson 
here, host of the Rod Peterson Show, inviting you to join us wow. daily for two hours of Atlanta's fun. Auburn University plane crashes in Opelika. Pilot is injured. Wow. I know. I don't want to hit a bridge, my friend. But uh, then maybe it was too late. Maybe they were sleeping. They could have been sleeping. You never know. It's kind of weird. Auburn University planes crashes and Opelika pirate pilot injures. Oh, wow. Oh, that's not. Thank you, my lovely bride, Andrew. I was a student, student pilot from Auburn University. You were driving that plane 10 hours ago. They say it's an Auburn University student. Non life threatening injuries. One, two, three, four. CM Punk out and made for the a man it's fake man last night. Woo-hoo. That's a rebel like me. <laughs> One of the co-workers told me there was a police cast last night near their house. Well, please, please chase. Welcome back in appearing number two. Got a lot of uh, reports coming in on the WQE key. YouTube page this morning. We appreciate you guys. It's the, it is the, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, period number two. Sports coming to the hour as we go into the Friday Night Light scoreboard, Richard Holdridge, and more headline news right now. It's Rhino Radio Penitentiary. I'm your host of the most, the one, the only, Ryan O'Neill, and of course... Oh, I am the game. How about you? 50,000 plus of you worldwide on the Shoutcast. Shout out loud across that Ryan O'Neill media page. Earth, Rock, Radio, New Mexico, Arizona, all over that Navajo Nation, which some of them got some snow this week or getting some snow this week. Also, ladies and gentlemen, we're across the British Columbia Isles of Canada, eh? And finally, the Jordan Communication of Family Radio Stations, in Atlanta, Metro Atlanta, 99.1 FM, WQE, the key, home of Southern Sports, Inspirational Talk, Headline News, and you're in the Rhino Radio Penitentiary where you're in lockdown. Woo, woo, that's right. Uh, we want to welcome everybody in this morning. We're going to welcome you in shortly. But first, to my haters, I got this to say to you. I am the man around here, whether they like it or not. What's up, everybody? Welcome in. Uh, Mac, 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 Macmon is with us from Huntsville, Alabama. Pete's on with us as well. And Andrew Blossom, right, is always with us this morning. So there you go. We appreciate everybody being with us. Uh, we got movies coming up for you in the next period. We're going to talk about the new Beetlejuice trailer, Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire, taking the number one spot. And coming up this Friday, Godzilla and King Kong are going to be teaming up to take on a common enemy. We'll talk about that in a big cage match. <laughs> coming up in the movie reviews with our friend Shane B in the final period of play. And with that being said and done, what is the best movie remake? Now, I only put four on there. So many of them. King Kong, Ocean Eleven, The Mummy, Willy Wonka. Willy Wonka originally... The one had Gene Wilder in it, and then you had Johnny Depp with Charlie and Chocolate Factory. The Mummy, the original one back in the early days. Then the Brandon Fraser one with The Rock in there, Scorpion King. Oct- o- Ocean Eleven, the original with 
the Rat Pack. And uh, then, of course, later on, with Hollywood's version of the Rat Pack, Brad Pitt, George Clooney, Julia Roberts, and more. And King Kong, the original, of course, many, many versions of that one, plus the one that Jack Black was in and many other King Kong movies. Yeah, there was one that Jack Black was in. Uh, many, many more uh, after that. King Kong is leading the remakes with 88%, Ocean Eleven with 12%, The Mummy and Willy Wonka, both everybody's like, yeah, who cares? <laughs> Nine minutes past the hour, we are holding at 59 degrees on our rainy skies out there in the Atlanta metro Atlanta area. Take an umbrella with you, more rain coming in later on today and throughout the evening. We'll have a complete rundown of your rain forecast in just a few as we head into the first break of this period and everything. We want to thank everybody for tuning in. And uh, uh, Pete said that one of his neighbors said there was a police chase near his home last night. Andrew Polanis reported this morning that Aunt Auburn University on plane crashes in Opelika and the pilot is injured, but he is doing fine. A single engine plane owned by, we'll talk about this right now, a single engine plane owned by Auburn University crashed Sunday in Opelika, injuring the pilot, according to authorities and flight records. Uh, the crash at the dead end of Watson Street, the aircraft flipped over and had some damage, according to records, and a photo of the crash was taken by Opelika police and placed on social media. The, most, the mostly white plane, which had blue and orange tr stripes with the Auburn logo on the tail of it, was registered to Auburn University. The pilot suffered non-life-threatening injuries. The pilot was identified as the only one on there by a WTVM female student pilot, but Auburn could not immediately be reached. Auburn University could not be immediately reached for comment. Wow. Some other headlines that I want you to put in there. Here's some, uh, and we'll talk about what's going on in South Carolina. Here's some Alabama headlines for you, you Alabama listeners this morning. Two killed, two injured in a Jeep as a Jeep hits a tree in Dallas County, Alabama. Alabama man visiting family in Florida killed and hit in a crash, hit and run crash. Man victim of a manslaughter in a deadly 2019 Alabama nightclub shooting. And a 20-year-old woman found dead in Montgomery shot. Homicide investigation is underway. Let's look into that one right quick. A 20-year-old Montgomery woman was found dead Monday after a gunshot wound in Montgomery, Alabama. Montgomery police are looking into the into the homicide and the investigation of 20-year-old Alexandra Shepard, who was found dead at the 5100 block of Carmichael Road. Shepard was pronounced dead Monday, and her body was taken to the Alabama Department of Forensic Science for an autopsy, which reveals she was shot from and killed from a, a gunshot wound. Police have no arrest right now. There, look, anyone with information in the homicide, please contact 334-251-STOP. Uh, three, three, stop. That's 334-251-STOP. Three, three, stop. That's their crime stoppers in Montgomery. Secret witness line is 334-6254-1000. Wow, ladies and gentlemen. Didn't know it was getting all this Alabama news popping in up on my feed, but it is. Here. That's headline news there. Look at uh, a couple other headlines that for you as we head into our topic of the day before we head in there. Israel War, day 172. Um, soldier killed in Gaza fighting. Russian to a uh, killings. And deaths have gone up to the death toll of 252. U.S. Secretary General calls for immediate ceasefire between the Egypt and Israel border. And CIA Chief Bill Burns uh, departs the Gaza Strip after he's having talks put on hold for a truce, truce deal. Wow. Julie Garland, best known as Dorothy, and, and she was a great actress back in the 40s and 50s and even more. She, best known for her role as Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz, 
her Bel Air home is now on the market at a pretty hefty price. I mean, I guess we some of us put some money together and borrowed a little money from the bank. We still won't be able to pay for this home. <laughs> her Bel Air home could be yours for a whopping eleven point five million dollars. That's right. The home is a 1930s home, two stories, 5,513 square feet, including five bathrooms, six and a half baths, and an old Hollywood style. You would love it. Yes, you would. It's in Bel Air, and you can live next to the Fresh Prince if you want to. At age 47, Garland passed away in London from a drug overdose. So there you go. Wow. <laughs> Other headline news this morning. Uh Baltimore Bridge collapsed after cargo ship coll collision. We talked about that last hour. They're saying there could be reports of some dead. I'm going to have to look deeper into that. Some of the some of the sites say they are. Some are saying nothing. They're still recovering. We'll get you a complete rundown of that as it comes in to me this morning. I do thank our listeners for letting me know, though. Uh, Black Sea Fleet unleashed waves of drones in the Ukraine after a strike on the Russian Navy. Also, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about this one momentarily. Sean Diddy Combs uh, is home raided by federal agents in sex trafficking investigation. I've been telling you about all of them. Left, right, green, middle, more. So Hollywood stars, singers, rappers, uh, politicians in the left and the right, and even ones you love right now, y'all vote in. I told you all about them. We'll talk more about this. Wow. New York Appeals Court... And, and, and we weren't even, we were just telling it like it was. New York Appeals Court grants the former president a delay and cuts his bond payment in the fraud case if he gets it in the next 10 days. And his true social begins public training on, on, on the public training on Tuesday as he goes public with, with true social. He's got to make some money somehow. We'll talk about Sean P. Diddy Combs in just a moment. But first, Alex Murdoch, you guys know this guy from the man that was accused of murdering his wife and son. They made a Netflix original series, a Lifetime original series, a Tubi original series on this man. And the Lifetime one had you know, a pretty famous actor playing Murdoch, the court lawyer, that, the, the, playing the lawyer that's family ran a small portion of South Carolina from way back when Great Grand Diddy and they were high class people. His son had trouble with a boat accident and uh, all went downhill from there. Well, Becky Hill, who's a South Carolina court clerk, accused of tampering with the jury in the high profile murder trial of the ex attorney Alex Post on Monday, addressing reporters in front of the courthouse in Walterboro, South Carolina. She said, It has been my honor to serve as your collected county clerk. County Clerk of Court before announcing her resignation from the job, which she says she held since her election as a, as a Republican in 2022. In remarks, she referred to last year's Murdoch trial in which the well-known attorney uh, from the politically powerful South Carolina family was ordered to serve two consecutive life sentences for the 2021 gun shot slaying of his wife, Mark, and son, Paul. While seeking a retrial in January, lawyer his lawyers claimed that Hill pressured the jury to rule quickly in order to secure a book deal and many appearances related to the trial, which would have been jeopardizing to the case if it hadn't made it a mistrial, which they're saying it's not, but they're trying to say it. Hill denied tampering with the jury during the hearing before the retired judge, Gene Hole, on January 29th, claiming I did not have conversation with any jury about any topic related to this case. Because they could put her in jail, too. I simply do not believe that our South Carolina Supreme Court requires a new trial in a very lengthy trial on the strength of some fleeting and foolish comments. Uh, publicly seeking clerk of court, says the judge. Wow. He was also involved in a, a separate related controversy in which she supposedly plagiarized material for a tell-all book, her portion of it. Wow. South Carolina Law Enforcement Division confirmed it in January. Its investigations are looking at the two cases regarding him and jury tampering allegations and whether she used her position to bane per personal gain. On Monday, 
Hill said Murdoch's trial had caused me to reflect on my decision involving my stay in office as county clerk. And so after my reflection, I've decided best not run again in a re-election. I will not be able to, I will not be able to, I will not be, I will, I will now be able to focus on being a wife, a mother, and a grandmother to my two grand boys and will spend time with the people who mean the most to me. According to her attorney, according to her attorney, uh, State Representative Justin Bamberg, Bamberg, uh, Hill's resignation will effectively immediately, and her letter, resignation letter, was given to South Carolina Governor Henry McMaster's. Deputy Court, Cur Deputy Clerk of Courts Gary Hill will take the position right now until they have some uh, re-election. Wow. All this stuff going on around this. Of course, you know, the Murdochs were powerful in that community. So they're probably trying to make it look like, hey, I, I didn't do anything, even though I killed. You know, most people like that will kill somebody. They will. They will do that. Control. And if somebody does make a mistake, if this woman made this mistake, it could damage and have a re look into the case, but the judge says, no, 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 no matter how stupid, basically the judge says, no matter how stupid her actions might have been, we're not having a retrial, basically. <laughs> you got to love a judge just being honest like that. <laughs> Isn't that fair? Why can't we play way, way, way? All right, before we jump into anything else, I want to talk about this pity Sean D. Diddy Combs in just a moment. But U.S. Customs and Borders officials uh, have uh, seized a large shipment of counterfeit sports goods, championship rings. The shipment contained 40 2019 Kansas City Chiefs Super Bowl rings, 20 1969 Kansas City Chiefs Super Bowl rings, uh, 15 1985 Kansas City Royal rings, and 15 2022 Kansas City Jayhawk championship rings. The fakes were originally done in Hong Kong, China. Hmm. Things to make you go. Boop, 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 boop. Things to make you go. Boom. All right, and one more thing before we dive into a break and come back and talk with Richard Holdridge, who's going to be on the on hold here in just a few. Richard and I are going to talk some sports, River Dragons hockey, Columbus Lions football. We'll get ready for some Major League Baseball opening today on Thursday, the Braves and the Phillies. Also, we're going to talk about the biggest story, gambling Diddy or Diddy not, L.A. Dodgers star pitcher who's on the bench right now because of an injury. We'll talk more about this, one of the biggest names in baseball right now. That's coming up in just a few. But first, Sean Diddy Combs, home is raided by federal agents in sex trafficking investigation. Thank you for proving that things I've been saying over the years, God. Oh, no matter who it is, it's true. And allowing people to have interviews, speaking about all this, like, no, I'm not going to believe that about Kristen. I'm not going to believe that about Leonardo DiCaprio. No, 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 no. I'm not going to believe that about, uh, uh, you know, the Vince McMahons of the world. No, no, no. Sean Diddy Combs homes in Los Angeles, Miami, were raided by federal agents on Monday as a part of a sex trafficking investigation led by the Southern District of New York. A Homeland Security investigation spokesperson said the raids were conducted as the part of an ongoing investigation. Earlier today, Homeland Security investigators in New York executed a law, executed, executed law enforcement actions as a part of an ongoing investigation with assistance from HSI LA, HSI Miami, and other local law enforcement partners. Uh, we will provide further information as it becomes available. Wow. During the raid in Los Angeles, the Homeland Security experts uh, said that they were looking for any laptops or flash drives that could connect Combs to these allegations. Combs, who ha has not responded to, to the news of the raids, has been hit with four lawsuits accusing him of sexual abuse. The 54-year-old rapper is denied all those allegations. One of his former girlfriends, uh, Cassie Ventura, a rep r and singer who dated him back from 2005 to 2018, alleged years of sexual abuse and savage beating that she was she says she were witnessed by the rapper's staff both of them reached a settlement within days of her case wow 
They just want to take these people money. These people money. They just want to hurt all these people money. That's your imaginary conspiracy theory because some of you are, are taking money from somebody else and you're going, man, they might come up to me for being a piece of trash. <laughs> Let me tell you what. He's getting what he deserves. Anybody like this gets what they deserve. If you don't do anything wrong, guess what? You're not going to get anything. There's millions and millions and millions of people with money out there that nah, nobody even knows they have money because they don't go out and do things. Stupid. That's why they have money. Durr. I know two people right now personally, personally, that would never do anything stupid. And that's why they have money. Uh, anyway, the lawsuits include a, a file by a Canadian woman who claims she was sex trafficked and gang raped in 2003 when she was 17. The woman is only identified as Jane Doe. Uh, says Combs invited her to his recording studio in New York City where she he gave her drugs and alcohol before he and his friends did the deed. Combs denied those allegations, arguing he was being falsely targeted for his wealth, like all fake rich men do. I'm being targeted. Look, I just told you, I know two people with money right now. They've never been accused of anything because <laughs> they're not dumbasses and they don't go out there and do it. <laughs> oh, buddy boy, you know who I'm talking about. I'm just going to say buddy. You know who I'm talking about. He's probably laughing right now going, you're right. Uh, anyway, so there you go. I've been telling all this stuff that's been going on for years. 25 minutes past the hour. Currently, we are holding at, can you believe this, 59 degrees of cloudy, rainy skies in the Atlanta metro Atlanta area. It's the 26th day of March, and we're going to take a look at uh, sports in just a few moments with our good friend Richard Holders. But first, we'll go inside the Friday Night Light scoreboard. But first, ladies and gentlemen, and before the end of the hour, I'm going to try to do our daily devotion this morning. Uh, our question, our movie review question, we'll do it at the end as well. Our poll question of the day, what, what is the best movie remake? King Kong, Ocean Eleven, The Mummy, or Willy Wonka? 88% of you are digging that King Kong, re, those King Kong remakes, and 12% of you are digging the Ocean Eleven remakes. And nobody cares for The Mummy or the Willy Wonka remakes. So there you go. All right. Wow. Now. Yeah. I guess I can do, I was going, I'm expecting, yeah, there we go. We're going to take a break. Back in a moment, right here on the Rhino Radio Penitentiary. Good morning. Good morning. Hello? Hey, good morning. Good morning. How you doing this morning? Good, good, good. We'll go on after the break. Okay. This is Richard, right? Yeah. Okay, you sound you sound you sound different this morning. You're burning the candle at all ends of the stick, brother. Next week's going to be great for you. You get to go on vacation not to worry about anything. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Right, let me pull this up here, getting ready to do the things we got to do. Talk about that. Man. Uh oh, his phone then went dead.
resources so that you can make the best decision for you and your family. 678 525 Hey, sorry about that. Ah, not a problemo. I figured uh, something was up. These out of the way. Woo-wee. I'll be sending you a couple of new spots over at the next week because I got some new people starting next month, big ones. Okay. I got to uh, do all some recordings this week. We got a bank that just come on with us. Okay. Yeah. So I'll be sending you that over. That's why I ain't seen anything yet because I got a few things new coming on and I'm got to get all that taken care of, all the paperwork and stuff. Yeah. These accounts, it's not just, hey, here's the money, run these spots. These accounts are coming on. I got to sit down and actually put a put the schedule together and send them over uh, the information. Good. Yeah, so... I'll pro- you'll probably play. You'll probably play this bank at least three times during your show because they're buying that much for all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you don't have to worry about just doing it one time. You can you can put it in every single slot that you have. If you have four slots, put it in there. Yeah, if I do fifteen minutes or twelve or fifteen minutes segments, I got four spots for commercial. All right. Well, you can put it in all four spots because they are buying a. It's probably a bigger account I got in a long time. So. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, finally. <laughs> it is awesome. Thank you. All right, we're getting ready to go on, brother. Okay. Welcome back in to Rhino Radio Penitentiary. <laughs> Here we go. Tell them, tell them, sing it. Here we go, it's time. Oh, I'm feeling it all right. There is a party coming over tonight. Tell them. Friday night is a great night for football, but so is Saturday, Saturday night, Sunday, Monday night, Thursday night, and springtime, fall time, anytime. Especially Twisted Tuesday mornings with our guest. He is the host of the Sports Week weekdays from 2 to 3 p.m. here on the network. Also, the writer at Chattahoochee Valley Living. He's been all over the Fountain City from the Lions football to Columbus Chattahoochee baseball, everything in between high school, football, basketball, football. He is the voice, I'm the voice of Fountain City. Please welcome the one, the only. And a soldier, our friend Richard. Good morning, Richard. Hey, Ryan, I'm glad to be on your show. Good morning to you. Ah, good morning to you. It is a Tuesday morning, and we're going to talk some sports here. We're going to talk a little River Dragons hockey as we get ready to go into the playoffs next month, and which is not too long away, and it's football as it's back as well in the Fountain City. We'll talk, we'll find where you're going to be this week and heading into. Uh, to the weekend, as well as we're going to talk Major League Baseball opening date coming up on Thursday. But first, our top story this morning, I got to talk to you about it, is CM Punk talking. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's, it's the gambling thing going on with one of the biggest stars in baseball. And he denies it, but then, he, then there's some stories that say he didn't deny it. I don't know what to believe. Let's talk a little bit about this so-called gambling on games from one of the biggest names in baseball. But this is by far the biggest betting scandal in baseball since Pete Rose. Exactly. I remember, I was alive enough to remember when Pete Rose got banned for life. Right. From baseball for betting on games. And, you know, it, even though you know, he later admitted it, I, I remember, you know, I think the punishment was so harsh on him. Yep. Because he just kept it. Right. We don't know the whole story, but I know that the truth is going to come out. Yep. And uh, it, it's a possibility that Shohei and Tony could be involved. Yep. But it's also a distraction for a Dodgers team that is, is trying to get the World Series and win it. 
Yep. The Dodgers always go into every year, World Series or bust. They right. You pay roll, although I think the Braves have a better lineup. Thank you. The Dodgers are, <laughs> are, are the favorites because they ended up getting Shohei and Tony. Yeah, they did. And, 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 you know, he's a great player. He's in on a kind of an injury list sort of kind of, he's going to be, you know, he's been on the sidelines. He's supposed to be starting this, that, and the other, this is kind of a, a big scandal that's coming in to Los Angeles at this time. And, and look, Braves fans are really not caring. They're ready for Philadelphia on Thursday and opening day. So that's all the Braves are, fans are worried about but this right here is you know you just you never know what's going to happen and the you know reports that are coming in left and right and and he can't trust this person can't trust that person you know it's it's weird you know it's weird to me that either he didn't know or he knew i mean he made enough money that he probably wouldn't know if somebody took it out of his account you know but what if well, I know? I know you don't really want to get too much into it, but what is your thoughts on this situation? Do you do you think there's a possibility this is just something that's made up, or even though he admitted to doing it, do you think that uh, he's covering up for someone? Oh, I absolutely think it's a cover up. You got to remember, your interpreter is always with you during spring training and all the major league baseball games. Right. Your interpreter is constantly with you because you got to talk to the media, and so. You don't know what's going on with your interpreter that you got your head in the sand. And I exactly. Think that he knew, and if it comes down that he knows, in my part, he's going to get suspended from Major League Baseball at least, I think, probably 58. Wow. I would not be shocked if it's it more. Wow. But, yeah, I, I think it's, it's that big. If he had knowledge about it. No, I agree with you. I Go ahead. Knowledge about it, right? I mean, I don't, I don't know what the bylaws are. I don't know if it's uh, one of those like you can't bet on baseball, but you can't tolerate anybody that bets on baseball. And you know, he's getting paid. Like his interpreter was a major league baseball employee, of right? The Dodgers, exactly, paid, exactly. It, it using the money to gamble it away. So exactly, yeah, it, it's going to come out and show his how he had knowledge about this. Well, it's, it's funny to me that he has this gigantic contract. He has all this money. What's the need for gambling, period? I mean, I understand some of the lower-end players, you know, and no, it's illegal for them to do it. I understand some of the lower-end players are going there making a certain amount. I mean, they're making decent, but I know players who didn't make that much every year. Bet a little money and make a little money on the side. I can see that. So – I mean, to me, I just don't understand this situation. So we'll find out as it comes in further and further. I think it's just taken away from uh, opening day, which is officially for the Braves on Thursday. Yeah, opening day is uh, just a couple of days away. And I think that it, it's really a special time of sports. It, it, it's treated like a, a sports holiday. Right. Talk about the, the first couple of days of the NCAA tournament of March Madness. Yes. It, it also be day because you got games all day. If you're a baseball purist, if you're a baseball fan, you get to watch baseball all day because you know, they're going to be televised on all the major networks. Right. The, the Braves are going to be right there in the afternoon, 3 o'clock. Yep. And they're taking on the Phillies. Yeah, Spencer Strider going up against Zach Wheeler. Woo. Top to bottom, the Atlanta Braves have the best lineup in baseball. Yep. The Phillies have something to say about. I, I still think with the payroll getting players like Bryce Harper, JT Villamuto, you know, and freeing up Zach Wheeler, you know, the Phillies have a case to say, well, what? Why not us? I mean, they did go to the right. World Series a couple of years ago. They had beat the Braves twice in the divisional round, and I think that the Phillies, even though the Braves are the favorites in the NL. The Phillies feel a little disrespected. I mean, they feel like, well, we should be the team to beat in the NL East because we have beaten the Braves for the last two years. Yeah. yeah. Well, they, I know I understand where they're coming from. I guess I can feel that. But as, as Braves country is right here, and we're in the midst of it. And uh, great lineup this year. I got 
I got feelings the Braves are going a lot further and can't wait for opening day on Thursday. And uh, I know you're going to be checking out your San Francisco Giants. What are you expecting from them? I know they will. There's no question that the Giants have a true lineup. And you look at, you know, they're taking on the Padres. Right. By the way, the Padres have already played two games. They have that series with Korea. Yep. And they split the series with the Dodgers. They yep. don't want to want to beat them. Yep. Uh, I, I do think the Giants finish in second in the NLS behind the Dodgers. Okay. But I, I would not be shocked if the Giants are. One of those teams, you know, they they just they got Logan Webb, you know, they they've got some great pitching. Uh, they hired that free agent from uh, uh, the pot, Blake Bell, yeah. He he split my uh, my Blake Bell, big time free agent acquisition, right? On the mound. Um, I I've always thought that like the Giants haven't really done a good job developing their farm system. Right. Some of their core players of the World Series teams have gotten old. Like Brandon Bell, he's on the Blue Jays now. And Brandon Crawford, I mean, all the Buster Posey retired. So they do get Pablo Sandoval back, but he's not Pablo Sandoval from 10 years ago. Right. But uh, as a Giants fan, it's good or miss. I love watching them, and even though they're usually at 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> I know, right? Poor you. <laughs> but I, I always try to go to a Giants race Sounds good. Well, um, uh, I know that we got a lot going on in March Madness. You're going to be covering that on the show uh, almost every day. But uh, I want to jump into a little football before we do some local sports right quick. Before we do talk about this coming up weekend with spring football action, I want to talk about the NFL owners banning the hip drop tackle despite some of the players having objections. Your thoughts on this hip hip drop tackle and do you know what it is and, and everything so that our listeners can know a little bit more about it? Yes, when the tackler goes in for a tackle and just levels their shoulder underneath the leg to get a, a player down. Right. I mean, it's really going to help improve the game and it's going to be less okay. injury. Um, I know that that was an easy way to get a player down, but right. if we're happy to fundamentally Thank you. <laughs> they, they can't get away the uh, hit. You, know, you get a 50-yard penalty for a late hit. But, I mean, they need to teach fundamentally tackle at the youth level. Yep. Learn how to just, otherwise, we're going to end up having flag football in 10 years. I hope not. I don't want a flag football. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with it because I like flag football, but I don't want our football to turn into nothing but flag football. So, uh, I agree with you. I mean, we – Fundamentals need to be taught, and I know some of the schools do teach that and everything. So, uh, and you 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 follow a lot of the high schools around the area in Atlanta, Georgia, and Alabama, and you've seen a lot of this. Have you ever seen this type of tackle in college and high school football, or is it just in the NFL and pro football? What are you talking about the tackling? Yeah, I'm talking about. Okay. People get bigger, faster, stronger. I, I think that you know people have forgotten how to to, to tackle properly. The fundamentals have created so much loss of the game. Definitely. So, well, speaking of tackle, we're gonna be tackling the spring coming up weekend. I can't believe it's Easter weekend, Resurrection Sunday, all that good stuff. But also this weekend, UFL, the debut of the XFL and the USFL combining together, see if they can lay the smack down. I got to say that because the Rock's part of the XFL for the weekend ahead for spring football. Let's get into that right quick before we do some other local sports. Your thoughts? The UFL, UFL kick it off with the defending USFL champions, the Birmingham Stallions, the XFL champions, Arlington Renegades. And then uh, you got another guy. I think Lewis is uh, taking on the DC Defenders. And then you got the. Uh, hang on one second. Okay, we're we're getting we're 
we're uh we'll be with you uh guys stay with uh, us go ahead go ahead Okay. You know, the Michigan Panthers. I mean, you, you got the teams that actually had their home stadiums uh, while their, their leagues were going on last year. Right. It's exciting. I'm ready for it to kick off this weekend, the combine. You know, it's going to be a big, extremely, the first game that comes on is going to have a big uh, intro and probably a lot of stuff. Uh, and if that is the if that's Birmingham and Arlington, are that's probably going to be the big game from for for the weekend because both of them are defending champions. I believe the Rock could be there this weekend since he's with the XFL portion of it. I believe it's going to be a big big extravaganza this weekend. What do you think? You think there's going to be a big extravaganza heading into that game particularly? First weekend in April, so WrestleMania. Oh, yeah, right. well, Rhett, let's just say this. I love WrestleMania. I love wrestling. It's the biggest event of the year. But it would not compete this weekend with Resurrection Sunday, MLB opening up. Uf, it might be UFL out, but there's a lot going on this weekend it couldn't beat. So, <laughs> uh, so yeah, so, I mean, I'm just going to be – and then we're still in the midst of March Madness, which is is – is going on right now. We're into the sweet 16 spots. And I know you're going to have a lot to talk about on that later on, but I want to talk about river dragons and I want to talk about uh, the Columbus lions football river dragons. We're just getting ready to go into the month of April, which means it's getting closer to the end of the river Dragons season. They already clinched their home. I spot we're expecting some championship wins what as we come down to the wire and down to the last few weeks, what do we expect from the River Dragons? And we know we want them to continue winning. Do you think there's going to be any uh, rough spots going into the last couple of weeks? Well, we expect them to continue playing well and peaking right where they need to be and hoisting that Commissioner's Cup trophy at the Columbus Civic Center in May. They swept the Motor City Rockers over the weekend, and they have yes. a six-game win streak. Remember, Motor City snapped their 16-game win streak, so they're a lot last month has been against the Motor City Rockers. And I really think that the River Dragons are playing their best hockey right now, and that's right. what you have to ask for getting into the playoffs. It, it is going to be tricky because, you know, it's a brand-new season in the playoffs, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but the goal is in front of them. They should be clinching full dice. Pretty soon, especially with the season, probably two more weeks left yep. to go in the season, three weeks left to go in the season. Yep. And they have a couple more home games left. So the River Dragons know that everything's in front of them, and uh, they should end up coasting in the playoffs and getting home ice. Yeah, I, I could see that and everything. I'm ready for it. We got a, three, a few more weeks left of the regular season playoffs. Uh, and and who do you think the River Dragons will be playing in the playoffs? Uh, because we already feel like that they're going, who is, who's looking good on the other side? Well, you got to remember that you're going to have, uh, I think the playoff format has eight teams. Right. So in the first round, they might play uh, somebody like the Mississippi Sea Wolves. Right. Yeah, they're going to play somebody in the Continental Division. Right. Uh, they won't play uh, Eden Tim or Motor City or one of the teams in the competition until the federal prospect Right. I expect it to Carolina in second place. Yeah. Uh, they got they're like 16 points behind the River Dragons, but uh, they should be playing somebody in the first round, either a Mississippi or a one of the expansion teams, and then uh, playing Carolina in the semifinals. I 
I can see that. So we got a few weeks away before that gets started, ladies and gentlemen, and we will be talking more about that. Let's jump into more football action, arena football action, and that's the Columbus Lions. Of course, they were off last weekend. They should be getting close to being home once again. I think they got another weight game or something like that. I know you've got some connections. You've been you've been keeping up with the Columbus Lion football for years. Uh, they won their first game. So what when is the next big game and is home or on the road? Okay. And that game is on March the 29th. And then their home game is going to be April the 12th against the Amarillo Venom at the Columbus Civic Center. All right. There you go. First first official home game. I know they're going to be doing some things there, Columbus Civic Center. I know uh, people are going to be excited for Columbus Lions football. Different division this year because last year they totally dom- dominated where they were, correct? That's right. So they moved they up. Completely dominated. <laughs> yeah, dominate. I mean, it was it wasn't like they even had to even show up, really. You know, uh, you know, if the, they the only way they could have lost last year was just not to show up. <laughs> very true. It is. It is. All right. Well, we've got all this. Let's talk about what you got going on this week with Georgia Alabama Sports Live. We know you got baseball, 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 my friend, but a high school baseball at that. Let's talk a little bit about some stuff that's going on at Georgia Alabama Live. Well, we are going to have a very busy week of college baseball. In fact, last night I called the longest baseball game in Georgia Alabama Sports Live history. What? Four hours, 30 minutes. Kendrick defeated Spencer 27 to 26. Whoa! What? And I, I found out that the GHSA does not have a time limit on games. Okay. So if the baseball stadium's got life, they play until the game is over. I know that that is got to be taxing on high school players. Oh, I know. Especially since Kendrick's got to play another game uh, tomorrow or today now. Right, right, right. Uh, Giving you the content that you deserve, and, and we just appreciate everybody's support. 
Definitely so. Well, guys, uh, follow Richard on Instagram as well as Facebook and everywhere. Uh, the Sports Beat with Richard Holder. It's weekdays from 2 to 3 p.m. right here on the network, so get ready for that. Richard, we appreciate you being with us. I'm glad you enjoyed yourself last night. I know it was a long game, but uh, that came down to the wire. That was two good baseball teams right there you got to enjoy last night. Oh, Ryan, one more thing. I, I want to give a shout-out to my alma mater, Green Harvard University. Yes. I follow them because, you know, I share the stuff on social media. Yep. Uh, they're, the, they're the NAIA championship tonight for, for men's basketball. And what is their mascot? The Lions. Go Lions. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, uh, Gabe Reynolds, who's a frequent guest on the show, he was a student coach at Free Heart. So really? I know that we're both excited. I know you guys are excited. So, good luck to them tonight. Bring that championship home. So, Gabe and Rick can uh, talk about it when they get a chance because you guys get that championship. They, they get that championship, but they bring that championship home. They stay away. You guys will have a, probably a full hour to talk about together. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, I interviewed him yesterday. He is going to be on the show today. Okay. So, uh, but, that, but that interview aired yesterday. But we did, we did talk a little bit about free harvest basketball. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, we're going to let, uh, we'll be right back in a moment, ladies and gentlemen. We'll close out this hour of the Rhino Radio Penitentiary. Tune in today from two to three with the Sports Beat and Richard Oldridge. Back in a moment. All right, brother. That was awesome. Sweet. Sounds good. I didn't want to get too much into March Madness. I talked about that yesterday with Coach Lewis. Oh, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. And uh, we had, uh, I wanted to get a few other little things, but, um, Enjoy your uh, spring break next week. Of course. Get some rest. Yeah, and, 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 you know, have a good time. Don't, don't worry about all the sports stuff because you'll be here when you get back. <laughs> and everything. So, how, how many endings did that game go? Eight. Eight? How many? Wow. They, did the extra they Kendrick was down 15 to 1, and they ended up winning the game 27 to 26. Wow. Wow. Whew. Yeah, well, a lot of walks in the game. I, I can tell. Yeah, well, they were getting, that must have been, they were getting tired at the end of the night. So, uh, but anyway, all right, man. Well, we'll talk to you when you get back and uh, enjoy yourself. We we'll appreciate you. Oh, absolutely. Thank you, Ryan. All right. Bye. Wow, is it cold there and snow and ice and oh, oh. weather may be interfering with the broadcast. I hope not. My, it's been perfect on my end. Entertainment news coming up for you.
It was glitchy. Must have been water getting on you because mine. Listen to the sustainable brown girl radio show hosted by. Only everything's working perfect over here. So. Let's see. All right, got to that. No, 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 no. I like so and so. I got to ignore it. Flag is stuck to the flagpole. Ooh, it's that cold in Iowa. Ooh. Glad it's just raining here. All right. Did you get to watch the Ghostbusters movie? Okay. All right. Well, we'll talk about it next week. Then hopefully it'll still be number one. No matter what, we'll talk about it. Uh, I know that Godzilla and King Kong are supposed to be coming out Friday together. They got a new new in, common enemy, so we'll see how that turns out. And I saw the trailers for Beetlejuice. <laughs> uh, good thing good thing he's older because it looks perfect for him being older with that makeup on. Yep. I don't know who all's gonna be in that movie, but I just saw the trailer and him and the original girl. So. But yep, there we go. All right. I'm gonna ask you about the movie coming out this week. Did you see any movies, anything we could talk about today? <laughs> Do what? Did you see what? <laughs> no. Oh, no, no. I can't believe you watched that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I wasn't even going to watch it. it I'm not anything that takes away from the original. I just don't care. <laughs> not everything's remake. Like King Kong. <laughs> Ocean Eleven. Oh, I right. so. <laughs> oh Lord. Roadhouse. Roadhouse. Peter Griffin. Roadhouse. <laughs> oh Lord. 
I couldn't, I couldn't find, I, I, I was trying to watch some stuff. I did watch the first season and the first four or five episodes of the new Quantum Leap. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, but there was some things in there that I probably wouldn't like. I didn't like, but uh, or I didn't care for, I should say. But at least they kept uh, Al and Sam's names alive in the series. So at least because the, the actor that played Al, of course, passed away. But at least both of their names were kept alive in the series. And um, the new cast of characters, you know, it, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. And um, there was a few of them that were like, hey, that, they could have left that out of there, but whatever, if that's what they want to do, I don't care. Majority of it was, 98% of it was good. And I appreciate them, you know, you know, kind of respect in the past and everything of the original series and not making new characters with those names and everything. But, you know, Al's daughter was in it. There was a girl who played Al's daughter. And then the guy, the guy Hudson guy, he played, his character was based upon the guy that, Sam had jumped in in Vietnam back in the day. So, yeah, uh, Ernie Hudson played, you know, remember the time that Sam jumped into the uh, uh, Vietnam War to help his father, keep his father from dying or something like that, and, and saved all those people? That was, that's, that's who uh, the Ernie Hudson guys playing in the series. So it's it. I haven't I haven't got through it because I hadn't been able to to have time to watch all of them. But eh, some of them were like eh, something that you know our generation be like. Eh, we don't understand that. But then you know there was a lot of respect to the eighties and nineties. Uh were not like put down as much as the oh, when they went further back. <laughs> you know. But other than that, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. I, I watched it to see, I was like, uh, let's see how they're gonna destroy this, but Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, 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 no. That should have ended when Brandon Lee passed away. That murder, passed away, whatever many of us say. It should have. It's just uh, coming off as just more more propaganda. Exactly. All right, we're getting ready to go on, brother. It is the final period of play on Twisted Tuesday edition of your favorite radio show. That's right. We're going to get it. We're going to the movies now. So get your favorite candies, favorite soda, your popcorn popped, and ready to head into the movies. We got previews and reviews and more coming up right now. Tell them, Triple H. It's Rhino Radio Penitentiary. I'm your host and most, Ryan O'Neill. And of course, yes, I am the game. 50,000 plus of you worldwide on the Shoutcast. Shout it out loud across that Rhino Radio media page. Earth, Rock Radio, New Mexico, Arizona, and the Navajo Nation. We're across the British Columbia Isles of Canada. And finally, the Jordan Communications of Family Radio Stations, East Alabama, West Georgia, including right here at 99.1 FM, WQEE to Key, Metro Atlanta and Atlanta's very own news, inspirational talk, and Southern Sports Station, which is mean we're live all day and we're the only talk station around that's bringing you real people for the real deal. All right, well, good morning to you. Coming up this hour, we're heading into the movie theaters. Get ready for that. We're going to talk some top 10 movies, what's hot, what's not. And to my haters, I got this to say to you. 
That's right. I'm the man around here, whether they like it or not. And please welcome our Cisco, our Ebert. Two thumbs up to all kind of movies, shows, Netflix specials, Hulu, whatever's out there on the internet and movie theaters, if they're good. And two uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin fingers for those that, well, are not so good. He watches what we don't want to watch, and he watches what we want to watch and tells us what's good, what's not, what's hot, what's not. Please welcome our very own Shane B. Good morning, Shane. Good morning. How you doing on this Tuesday morning, brother? Besides it raining. Oh, uh, what a remake is why? Um, yep. This seems to be the age of reboots. Yep. Hollywood is like we we talked about this before. Hollywood is just out of ideas. Exactly. Exactly. I talked with some friends about this before. Uh, that man's legacy, brazenly, it did be left alone. It should be honored. The man died making that movie. Exactly. Why do you feel you think you could make it better? And they can't. They can't. You know, I agree with you on that. I, they can't. You know, his legacy, uh, he died making that movie. There was many speculations around things there, of course, you know, different theories. People have different theories and everything. I spoke about it here on the show with an expert who, who investigated into the uh, death of Brandon Lee and bringing him the movie Crow back. I mean, if there's a revenge for his death, that's one thing. If you want to take a movie and put new characters in that are going to get revenge for the original characters, that's different as long as you don't destroy the legacy. But that's a movie that I agree with you should never be remade. That's a one time, one and done deal. Well, they destroyed it already. Simply with the trailers, it looks like we got a little star star playing uh, Eric. Mm-hmm. As a crow. But he looks like a. Oof. I'm choose my words carefully here. Uh huh. He looks like an emo. <laughs> oh, so he, so, so he probably listens to, probably listens to. Never mind. Am I gonna get call that man out? Never mind. <laughs> I mean, this, this, this character doesn't come off the same. He looks like Jared Leto from the playing Joker in Suicide Squad. Oh no. Yep. girlfriend is supposed to be uh, played by about uh, what a name this girl has. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Eight, eight, twig. What? It, it doesn't seem like a real name. You don't have to have one. Whatever. They, they made them an interracial couple now because we have to do that out of it. Right, right, right. <laughs> it just make no sense whatsoever. I, I don't feel you two as a couple. Uh, it's going to be directed by Rupert Sanders, which kind of disappoints me because he did the, uh, well, he did the Ghost in the Show movie that had, uh, oh, what's that girl's name? Mm. Uh, Scarlett Johansson. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Which wasn't exactly a great live action adaptation of. Ghost in the Shell. Uh, Ghost in the Shell was originally an anime. A great anime. Um, but the live action was eh. That was bad. But he also did uh, Snow White and Huntsman, which was, well, it was kind of enjoyable. I don't know how he got pushed into this project. I really don't. Right. But maybe he jumped on the opportunity, and that's the only thing I can think of. Well, 
Well, I, you know, I'm looking at I'm looking at the pitchers. He does look like the Joker. Uh, what you only got three main characters so far for this so-called movie, <laughs> um, and a few yeah, other names. The damage that you on the Right, right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I think these actors and singer and whoever these people are, I think they could do better if they had did some kind of original concept. You and I spoke about it. It's it's almost like Hollywood don't want to come up with anything new. They just want to continue to take from the old and redo it and give to the new. Um, sometimes they do a good job at doing the new. I mean, sometimes they do a good job at taking something old and changing it around. You know, some movies are pretty decent the second time around, but I, I, I'm just looking at this right now, and I don't, I don't feel it. I just, I feel like, I feel like it's a disrespect to Brandon Lee. Honestly, that's just my opinion. Okay. Okay. Right, right. Will Smith about the Williams sisters. Okay. I'm not going to check the trailer out for this one because when I heard it was coming out, I'm just, I wasn't interested whether it would be good or not. It's just, like I said, going back to the original, you know, it's a scary situation. And, and the only person that was ever successful taking the crow thing and being successful with it after Brandon Lee was steam. So, <laughs> so uh, with his wrestling gimmick, but, uh, uh, now that we got that out of the way, um, I want to move on to the Roadhouse. You had a chance to watch that, but is there anything else you'd like to add about this Crow movie? Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Have a chance to be good. Yeah, uh, yeah. The trailer really does, you know, it's a good old teaser trailer. It leaves us in the dark. Uh-huh. Uh, we have Jenna Ortega coming in as basically the new Lydia, but uh, one of our writers come back to play uh, her character. Mm-hmm. Uh, the mom is back. I, mm-hmm. Right. Wow. But we have uh, Jen up in the attic. She finds the the model of the city, the same one that we know it found. And the trailer just kind of really throws Beetlejuice in your face. Now, the original movie, you know, she got, the Winona got tricked in seeing this thing. Exactly. Uh, get him to ride. This trailer just makes it seem like he just pops up. Yeah, I saw that part. So, I'm really interested to see what they're going to do there. And yeah, it's just nice to be there. 
Yeah, it's. It, I've seen the trailer too. I uh, I think that uh, Catherine O'Hara is the mother uh, from the original series. Uh, writers coming back is Lydia, of course, and then she's bringing her own daughter into it. And I didn't know that if that was her daughter in that trailer or everything, but she looks a lot like Lydia did when she was a teenager. Totally different era. I, I think that's a great cast choice. Okay. Uh, to have Jen Ortega play with on Rice's daughter. I really do like that because uh, maybe it has something to do with Winona playing Wednesday. Okay. Like Winona, uh, yeah. Uh, yep. Okay. Okay. So I do I, like that. This is going to boil down to the right. This is all going to boil down to writing, execution, direction. Hopefully they pull this off because, you know, this is just one of those movies that, you know, it, 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 it could be what asking the question why? <laughs> Right, right, right. For a uh, top kind of thing. That's what it seems it's like. Been so many years. Exactly. Now you want to try this? Well, the one thing I'm seeing in this too is Beetlejuice has a wife in this movie. So how's that gonna be incorporated? Yeah, how does that happen? Yeah. So. I mean, and then William Defoe was in this movie as a B movie actor who was a who's died in, in life. He was a B movie actor and he's a ghost detective. But I can see him being in this movie and his thing. You got Catherine O'Hara returning as the grandmother, of course, which is the mother of Renona Ryder. I thought she's like, what I don't know if she was she's the real mother or the stepmother. So I can see that the father's not gonna be in this movie. So you're probably right about the funeral is probably his and everything. So um looking at the cast yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I mean I mean like that's the first I can think of for it to be significant to be uh brought up in the trailer. The teaser trailer of all things. Right. It has to be a character significant. So that's one of the first I can think of. The dead. Yeah, he's the only one that has not returned, and I don't know if that actor's still alive or not that originally played her father. Um, so uh, I just – the only question is I can see this happening. I can see them going back to this house. It's just that the original people that were in this house, Regina Davis, of course, and then they're not returning, but Michael Keaton's returning as Beetlejuice. The only question I do have is Beetlejuice's wife. How did he meet her? What did he, you know, the last we saw him, his head was shrunk. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Where did you meet this wife? Mm -hmm. Was she in the waiting room? Of that he, that's, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. The head shrinker got him, you know, and, and where did he meet her? And, or did she die later on in the house? Did, is this house... You know, they're going to have to explain, was the house shut up? Did they all leave this house? Was this, this their summer house? What? What is what is the premise behind it? Because I don't see any premise behind it. I just know that the, it's coming out later this year, supposedly, except in September. So um, we'll find out. I guess, Shane, we get closer to it. So, wow. Ooh. I'm really interested in how they're going to use, uh, you know, because the original movie, Yep. Uh, especially with the worms. And it's like, how much CGI is going to put in this movie? Are we going to stick to the classic and use practical? 
physical effect. Right. How much of it is going to look real and genuine, and how much of it is going to be CGI? I'm really interested to see what they're going to do there. Yep. Yep. Well, I mean, Tim Burton is a producer, so um, I kind of feel that there may be a little something in there with him in it. Uh, I, I have a little hope for it because he's one of the producers. So I'm going to try to have some hope for this. Um, what I'm not having hope for is this has been announced. Okay. We, it seems we finally have a new chain. <laughs> oh <laughs> man, no. Really? Yeah, this is going to be taken on by Aaron Tua Johnson. Um, if you've seen the movie Cook Ass. Right? It was that guy, the lead guy, uh, was Cook Ass. And for one, I don't even think it's British, which would be an interesting change. But he's been getting kudos and endorsements from people across the industry. Um, I don't know if Daniel Craig has come out and said anything about the casting, but uh, who cares what he has to say anyway? He felt like he gave up in the movies. Right, um, right, right. Special with Spectrum. And then No Time to Die, they just completely killed his character. But. He's supposed to be taking on the role as the new James Bond. I don't know if that's I, I don't have any problems with Larry Tilly Johnson. Um, right. I did like him in Bullet Train. Okay. Um, I had no real problems with him and kick ass. Uh, but as Bond, oh, we just got to wait and see because like, you're trading off some dangerous territory with. Yeah, that's it legendary. James Bond. <laughs> right, 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 right. I understand. I understand. A legendary character that uh, there's been a number of people who've portrayed James Bond over the years, and each time they had to be better. You know, so I agree the with The only person of notoriety I've seen that came out and actually endorsed them was Pierce Throb. Mm hmm. And that's like, okay. All right, Pierce, she had a good movie or two. He did. Uh, definitely love Goldeneye. Uh-huh, yep. Uh, but maybe he's just staying on the positive side, the right side of the audience to endorse his guy. Maybe he's <laughs> looking for a cameo. <laughs> yeah, get me in there. I want to be a cameo, yeah. <laughs> oh. Again. Right. Uh, about as that uh, adapting for a more modern audience and like that's a scary statement to say. Right. And the Bercolis came out on that and said, ah, I'm leave our character alone and just make him what he is. A bad to the bone character. So, yes. <laughs> Well, I tell you what, we're going to take a break. When we come back, Shane, we're going to talk about the Roadhouse movie. Plus, coming out this Roadhouse. Coming up this weekend is King Kong and Godzilla tag teaming it up to take on a new enemy. I want to get a little thoughts on that. And of course, next week, we'll probably get to talk about the Ghostbusters movie, which took the number one spot. Stay with us, ladies and gentlemen. We got more with Shane B after this. Roadhouse next. Uh, back in a moment. Oh, Lord. Road out. Sound like Peter Group. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, I got a few listeners saying they want to watch it. So uh, we will definitely, uh, they'll definitely need to get. What you have to say about it? (laughs) 
Okay, let's drop this at the God, it's Godzilla and Kong. They're tagging up. They're going to be the tag team champions. They're going to take out the Judgment Day. I'm just kidding. Absolutely, Godzilla, King Kong, Godzilla, 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 Godzilla
that Shane watched and a lot of people are asked about. Shane, what movie was that? <laughs> Road House. Road House. <laughs> All right, Peter Griffin. <laughs> Anybody don't know what we're talking about, go back and watch Family Guy. <laughs> this movie tried to get in and get out. Of okay. About a two-hour run time. Not bad. Okay, okay. If it was called The Bouncer or The, the Guy. The, right, the, uh, anything. Or Retribution or something. Right. Um, they, yeah. It, it just, it's, it's marketed as based on okay. the original. Okay. It's been marketed as inspired by them. Not based on, because... Okay. He's our new Dalton. Okay, new Dalton. Okay. They kind of make a continuous running, I don't want to say a running gag, but they did they can keep the the notion going on that reminds you that oh, he likes to go back to Dalton. He likes to go back to Dalton. He likes to go back to Dalton. Okay. Uh instead of the older rich guy trying to get the roadhouse uh -huh. for the land we have this rich guy's son uh, you might as well put him in, well basically he's in jail okay so we're dealing with his son okay uh, now there's a backstory that they they flash back He can't. I don't want to see his naked butt. <laughs> uh, Pete, you going to watch it now? <laughs> Good yeah. actor. Montana. 
Okay. To hire another guy. Okay. And ends up finding uh, this guy, Carter, played by Post Malone. I didn't even realize Post Malone until I looked it up. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Really? Dude is everywhere, isn't he? Okay. Fighting them in this, this, this dive bar, whatever. They got a, <laughs> they have an octagon in the bar. Uh, uh, <laughs> makes sense in Montana. It makes sense in Montana now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's just fighting anybody. <laughs> <laughs> fight me, fight me. Burr, burr, burr. So it all comes out of nowhere. He's like, no, I'm not going to fight it. He's like, okay. <laughs> so she ends up hiring. Right. And so whatever he goes down there. Now, the road that. This is taking place in um, Glass Key, Florida. Okay, Florida. Okay. The road house is basically, okay, first off, she, 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 she said, I own a road house. Okay. Oh, so you're just going to straight up call it a road house. So we get down there. Okay. Really? It's a tiki bar. It's like an open air tiki bar. Like, <laughs> I have the roadhouse bit. Oh, um, the soundtrack. I hate the soundtrack. Uh oh. Really did. They were trying to, it, it, it felt so generic as compared to the original movie. Because uh, our original movie, we had, they were like one band. It was a blues guy, a blind blues uh, guy, yeah. Okay. Their music just feels like they're trying to replicate, uh, replicate what happened of the music of the original. And it just didn't feel the same. But the comedy. Right. The comedy is great. I'll, I'll, I'll spoil this one oh, tell aspect us. of the movie. All right, here we um, go. It's in, the, it's in the beginning of the movie. Okay. That's real early when he has first fight okay. the roadhouse and he's fighting these five guys. Okay. And you know, he takes them all out. <laughs> and <laughs> here we go. He ends up driving these guys to the hospital. <laughs> what? It was an interesting transition scene. Um to where he's asking Frank, he's like, Do you have a car? Or they're not for this. Take you, I'll beat you up. I'm gonna take you to the hospital. Hey, that's a southern thing, right there, brother. That, that's a southern thing. I'll beat you up. We get into it, and then I'm gonna take you to the hospital, and then we're gonna we'll watch the Alabama Auburn game. <laughs> that's a southern thing, right there. Exactly. But so we we get more of this brand guy. Uh, He's not giving up. There's a silly scene where he, when we finally meet Grant, he's getting a straight razor shape on a sailboat. And it's like, well, that's a dumb idea. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> Why are you nicking me on this boat? He goes, he goes and attacks the captain of the boat. He's like, hey, you're on choppy water trying to get a straight shave. Uh, straight shave. <laughs> that makes sense. But for the most part, uh, well, his character. <laughs> we, we got we to gotta add the corruption element. 
uh -oh. uh, sheriff. Okay. Of uh -oh. course, you know, the police force. We don't see the police in this movie until like four minutes in. Wow. Uh, well, at least the police in Florida. Uh, there's one cop in the beginning, but other than that, our sheriff is played by uh, Joaquin uh, de Alameda. Okay. Uh, better known as Pucho from Desperado. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, wow. Oh, wow. Well, I kind of think it was me. Uh, <laughs> ben, ben Bond, black guy. Um, wow. <laughs> there you go. Look it up. Wow, this is so his love interest is a girl named Ellen, huh? Dalton's girl. Yeah, they they did meet each other at the hospital with the, uh, where he took the five guys. <laughs> I beat these guys up. Can you help them? I'm in love with you. <laughs> That's why she she's mad at him. <laughs> Wow. He ends up being sympathetic for him. And he becomes a local hero. Like, everybody knows his name. And it's like they point out things, too, in this movie. They, they point out so many obviously, uh, obvious things. They, they, they even make a joke about Jill and Hall ass Franky. Why is it called Roadhouse? It's like, oh, we're really about to do this right now. And he points out how. Well, why is it two words? Shouldn't it be one word? And she's like, no, oh, that's the joke. It's like, what's the joke? It just, that's the joke just made no sense. <laughs> but overall, it was a fun watch. Okay. Um, it, it definitely does not hold up. It does not have the same feel of the original. The original. It definitely does not hold up. Um, well, that's good. It, There you go. I figured. I figured in the end. I mean, this is a if it's a good story. Maybe if you had a, you know, maybe you know he could still be called Dalton, but you know, or even if they changed his name and just called the movie Roadhouse, and and none of the characters had anything to do with the original movie, uh, then you know, like I said. But if it's a good watch, uh, you just got to overlook the everybody know the original and checking it out. So. Sounds like it's pretty good. Before we get let you get out of here, because we're going to ask you how to follow you and all that good stuff, got to talk about the debut this week of King Kong, Godzilla, tagging up to lay the smack down on a new enemy and the new empire. I've seen the previews for it. Now, I was like, what? They're, they're tagging up again? And what, 100 years, 20, 40 years later? <laughs> After the original tag up? <laughs> Uh, what's your thoughts? I've heard of these Godzilla Kong movies. I, I, I'm just tired of them. And here we go with another one. This, this, this franchise doesn't seem like it's going away. It's not. Don't worry about it. It's not. <laughs> but we're gonna, they're going to connect it to the last one. That's the, good. Uh, the little deaf girl. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's supposed to be in this. Uh, I saw her in the trailer. 
Yep. So we're just, we're just gonna ride the ship until it sinks, I guess. Well, they did the Titanic that way, so why not? <laughs> Oh, it's going to do good. It, number one, though. Yeah. One. No, I don't know if it's... Yeah. Yeah. I think Frozen Empire will stay number one. Yep, I agree with you. It's going to come yeah. in at number two. This one might be number two. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. There's, there, there's becoming a slight uh, amount of disease for these movies. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, just for the whole reason of big eight. Right. Godzilla X Kong. Yes. I don't even understand your title. Godzilla X Kong. Yep. The new empire. Who are they fighting? Who's the new empire? Who are they fighting? Why are they having to come together? You know, and to me, these two creatures fought each other, and these two creatures, I guess, fought something else too in another movie, but these two creatures are not friends. So, um, I don't. I don't see them like working together. I see them fighting the same enemy, you know, which makes sense. I don't see them side by side. <laughs> like, hey, you get him from the left, I get him from the right. Yeah, you know, like they're gonna be able to talk to one another. <laughs> yeah, how much destruction do it take the two creatures to make before we finally figure out how to take them out? Yep. Exactly. Exactly. But They do. They do. Bad monsters. So good. And one thing I didn't like about that trailer was it got the kick off has a he has like a mechanical element on his hand. Oh. So they they're giving him equipment now. Oh no. Well, how did you get him to put that on? Exactly. We'll have to wait and see. I know it's not gonna take the number one spot. Well, Shane, tell us how to follow you, all that good stuff. Uh, on YouTube. Definitely follow yeah, me. Just, just go with it. <laughs> well, you got a lot of great material in there. Follow him, and of course, you get more material. And we're going to talk more about Ghostbusters, uh, Frozen, Imp Frozen Empires, I guess is what it's called. Next week, we'll talk about that. Plus, we'll find out about... Uh, a little bit about this Godzilla and Kong movie and um, Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace is back in theaters, I think, in May. So, oh, oh, that right quick. Uh, okay, go ahead, go ahead. So Friday, there are certain theaters, one of them being Alamo Draft House, uh, uh -huh. in honor of the 25th anniversary of Phantom Menace. They will be showing all nine. Of Skywalker Saga movies, the, the, the three trilogies. Really? All in one city. Oh, that's going to be a long that's day. like <laughs> 21 hours of sitting in the theater watching. Woo! <laughs> it's going to be packed, though. It's going to be packed for real, though. You know that. You already know it's going to be packed, Shane. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, it would be cool. I wish somebody would be doing that around here. And, you know, like we say with the Back to the Future trilogy, they should do the Back to the Future trilogy. They should have uh, people dressed up as the characters. Not just the people going in, but people out there dressed up as the characters bringing the people in. I mean, what, what are the guy, the people to take your, you know, the people to take your uh, ushers or whatever? Maybe they should have them dress up in character. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would be cool if they all dressed up at the day of, you know, still having to wear this this ugly vest and, and slacks, dress up as a character in the movie. So that, yeah. Wow. All right. Back in a moment, ladies and gentlemen, we close out the show right after this quick break. All right, brother. Great as always. Yeah, I really hope they do the Star Wars thing around here somewhere. I don't know. I got to check. 
check for sure. It's going to be in May, so you got a little time. So. Well, you could always take that day off. If, if, if it is something around, you could always take you a day off to go. I mean, you work hard enough for him to get a day off. <laughs> All right, brother, I'm going to let you go so I can close out my show and go on to the next day. And we'll talk again next Tuesday. Hopefully, you'll have the Ghostbusters down and we can watch, talk about it. Hopefully it'll be good. <laughs> yeah, I found this here on one of my apps. I think I want to go to the theater to watch this. All right. Well, let me know about it, and we'll talk again next week, brother. You have a good day. All right. Have a good day. All right. Bye. Don't tell Hollywood about the – if if uh if there's a marathon, cause Star Wars Episode One gonna be out in theaters in May, on and stuff. If they have a full day, if they have a full day. I'm gonna tell her about it. You guys will be there all day. <laughs> She'll be making you drive that day, Pete. <laughs> oh. Okay, let's see here. Uh, oh, wow. Got to give an update on this bridge. Welcome back into Rhino Radio Penitentiary. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Tomorrow morning, we're going to have uh, our fine history's very own Linda, Linda, uh, Brenda, not Linda, but Brenda Gasky will be with us tomorrow morning. Sorry, Brenda. Uh, update on uh, the rescue crews out there at the Francis Scott Bridge in Baltimore early this morning with the collapse with the cargo ship striking. Uh, rest, there's about, we're searching for at least seven people after it happened. Baltimore Fire Police Chief James Wallace said during a news brief early this morning, two people had been rescued with one of them in serious condition. We finally got that information in. I was told that earlier by a listener, but until it came out, I wouldn't, you know, I don't try to get it uh, out here on there, but I do appreciate that listener for knowing some stuff for us, probably hearing about it too. All right. Authorities say they indicated that the vehicle were, vehicles were submerged in water, and Wallace said the total of seven people still waiting rescue was a dynamic count as uh, search and rescue efforts carry on. So we'll keep you abreast with this tomorrow morning. All right, guys, I appreciate all you being with us. We're going to get out of here. Tomorrow, Brenda Gasky joins us from Horrifying History. It was a sad situation. We'll have we'll have Brenda tomorrow with us uh, in this last period. We'll have some weird and odd news and get you ready for True Crime Thursday this week, too, heading into Friday. We thank all of you for being with the Rhino Radio Penitentiary. And one more time, what is the best movie remake? King Kong got 89% of the votes. Ocean 11, 11% of the votes. The Mummy and Willy Wonka, nobody cared for. She'll be at the New Tech today. All right. Got some things to take care of, ladies and gentlemen. You stay with us. We'll be back tomorrow with more Rhino Radio Penitentiary. Until we meet again, guess what? Have a great day. Peace, love, respect. I'm out of here.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, you have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. I got a lot going on. Thank you.